Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make a pie mint, which is a grape juice based mead. Let's get started. So in today's video, I have right here a Cab Sav uh, wine base. This is for six gallons. Uh, I've had this for quite some time. In fact, I did a, a live stream a long time ago and I had some lovely friends uh, basically purchase this for me by giving me money to purchase it. So shout out to those people. We're gonna be doing two things with this today. We're gonna make a pie mint, which is again, a grape based mead or grape juice based mead. And then we're also gonna just kind of make the wine portion. The wine portion, not as important, honestly. Uh, I'm more focusing on the pie mint, but I do wanna have just the base Cab Sav style. So here's what's important about a pie mint. You can go to the store and buy Welch's grape juice or some equivalent grape juice brand. But the nicer quality grapes you have and the nicer quality grape juice you have, the greater chance you're gonna end up with a product you really like. So this right here is about a little over two gallons of grape juice, of grapes. It's, of course, it's this is premium, I would say, grapes. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and open this box up. Now this box does come with some things, it has some granulated oak for helping, it has bentonite for clarity. This is a kit and so it has some extra instructions. So in this kit, we have a Lauvin EC1118 packet. I'm not gonna be using this. Uh, I'm gonna use a different yeast here in a second. We also have some sulfite sorbates. This is for stabilizing and helping to actually really uh, preserve flavor. Don't think we'll use those. Bentonite, which is a clear, clarifying agent. Kisasol, which is also helpful to clarify. And Chitosan, also helpful to clarify. And oak chips, quite a lot of stuff. Um, let me grab our other yeast. All right, so we're gonna use two different yeasts. We're gonna use the uh, Red Star Premier Cuvee. It's super similar to the Lauvin EC1118. The Lauvin, the EC1118 is a champagne yeast, goes up to 18%, ferments really fast. This one's super similar. It goes up to 18, but it's more specific for wines, I would say, not necessarily so much a champagne yeast. So we're gonna use this for the regular wine portion, which will go into here. And then the mead or the pie mint we're making, we'll be using the uh, Red Star Premier Cotes, Cot I don't know how you say it, Cote des Blancs. Cote des Blancs. I butchered that, sorry about you. Uh, this one goes up to 14%. It's great for reds and whites. It leaves a bit of residual sweetness, which is something we want. And uh, it is actually a pretty, it has a good temperature range, I should say. So we're gonna set these to the side for the moment. We got our yeast. Um, I need to split my juice base. So I'm just gonna take this juice base out and actually split it into both of these containers. All right, so we got three gallon carboy here. This is a 4.75 gallon uh, fermenter. This will be the pie mint. This is the regular one. I topped off this, almost filled it up with water, still a little room, leaving a little room for headspace so that it, when it ferments, it doesn't go too crazy. And then this one has lots of room because we're gonna add now, here's the tricky part. We are, this is a, what, three and a half gallon. We're gonna add six pounds of honey to this thing. Now I'm adding blueberry honey because that's kind of what I have. And uh, I think it'll pair well with this wine base. So I'm gonna add my honey into this one. Um, and then I'm gonna split, this is an oak. Uh, hold on, here it is. Where'd it go? This is the granulated oak. I'm gonna split this. This is 20 grams, so I'm gonna put 10 grams of, of granulated oak into each. We're gonna go with that. Let me add all my honey to this. Well, I got so distracted looking at the amazing foam art that I'm creating here that I actually took and put eight pounds of honey in. So we're gonna move, we're gonna be rid ourselves of our foam art real fast. All right, if you've never made a mead or wine, anything like that, you have to need a hydrometer. This is a hydrometer. It measures gravity specific gravity to be exact. And uh, this will tell you how alcoholic the brew is. You're gonna float your hydrometer in your liquid before it ferments. This one is floating at 1.080 for the wine version. You can use this formula. 
That's gonna be about a 10 and a half percent brew, assuming that the yeast eat all the sugars, which they might. We're now gonna take a gravity reading of the piment version, which is right here. I knew this was gonna happen. Starting gravity of the piment version is 1.130, which is, uh, our yeast will not reach it, but it works out perfectly. 1.130 is about a 16.9, almost 17% mead. So we're looking at having residual sweetness, which I'm totally okay with. I think it this needs residual sweetness. Now let's go ahead and split up our granulated oak. According to this uh, wine kit, I was supposed to put bentonite in first, but I didn't. So that's okay. Um, our next and really final step is to just go ahead and pitch our yeast, specifically with this one, that the is so high gravity and it's a piment. Honey does not have a lot of nutritional um, value for yeast. So we're gonna add some Fermade O, which is an organic yeast nutrient. And I'm gonna treat this with a Tosna 3.0 schedule, which fancy term essentially means I take a, a specific amount of yeast nutrient, Fermade O in this case, and I allocate X amount per day to help it get going. So I just wanna treat the yeast well, make sure that this giant gravity that they're in will actually be chewed through. So let's go ahead and pitch our yeast. Again, we're gonna use all of this yeast. Sanitize the scissors. We're gonna pitch them and then shake it up. All right, so earlier I said I had one last thing to do, which was to add the yeast. The real last thing you need to do is put your airlock on. This is a waterless airlock, does not use water. It literally burps itself, essentially just as CO2 leaves, it depressurizes. This is a real airlock, um, normal watered airlock, and that will bubble as it deems fit. And we're gonna write down our stuff. I'm gonna write down my things, put this away. It's gonna start fermenting, and then we'll come back whenever they're both ready. Again, this one's gonna have a, a different, from, or excuse me, a different nutrient schedule. All right, we're back and it's been 20 days since we started this. Here are some gravity readings for you. Um, of course, fermentation went, I'm assuming you've probably fermented something before. If not, essentially it bubbles up a bunch and then the airlock you have bubbles and whatnot. So the gravity of the pie mint, which is the one with the honey, is at 1.0, Two four, uh, which is still still sweet. Not surprising because the yeast, of course, did cap out. We expected that to happen. Let's see what the gravity reading of the regular wine version is. All right. So <laughs> surprisingly, the wine version went extra dry. We're at like 0 0.99, nine, like 0.994, which is pretty dang dry, and that's totally okay. Um, here's what I'm gonna do. I know that this piment is done. It's been sitting for a while. I took a gravity reading about three days ago, four days ago, hasn't moved an inch. We're gonna go ahead and move it into this new container. Everything's been sanitized with star sand. As you can see, I'm a shirt. And uh, so we are now going to move it into this. While it's moving, I'm gonna do a taste test. So let me go ahead and get this to start moving over. All right, so while this is moving over, what does this taste like? Let's go ahead and start with, let's start with the regular, just straight up wine, Cab Sav wine version. Smells, I mean, smells pretty nice. You get a little of that granulated oak on it, on the nose. Definitely grapey, of course. Let's taste it. Oh, that's dry. That is very, very dry. It's good though, It's it's got a little alcohol burn. It's got a little heat to it, which is fine. I think this is gonna be delicious with some age and some more oak. We do still have our other half of the oak, which will include, it's, it's a very good red. I mean, even now it's buttery. It's got some nice body to it. It's definitely dry, but I think that's good for dinner. I, I like that. Needs some time though. It's pretty, a little hot. Needs some heat to <laughs> chill out. Let's go over to the pie mint, which is currently being racked over. Ooh, definitely still sweet. Got some heat to it, but it's so much more full bodied than this. The regular wine is not nearly as full bodied, doesn't have as much um, jammy, buttery, a thick mouthfeel. I think that's fantastic. It's decently clear too, for only being like, I don't know, like I said, 20-ish days old. Um, so that's not bad, it's, it's pretty clear for that. That's fantastic. 
I don't, I don't feel like I need to do anything to that other than to, well, I thought about oaking it more, but I kind of like it how it is. I'll, I'll consider that. I'm definitely planning on oaking this one further, the regular one further. So my plan here is going to be to take and rack both of them into new containers to get off of the sediment. And then we can consider adding the chisasol and, or chisasol, not chisasol, chisasol and the things to help it clear up. So let me move this stuff over and then I'll be back. All right, I moved them over. You might notice something. This one, which is the regular wine version, um, is more full. It's because I blended a little bit of what was left of the pie mint into there. So is this, this is like 1 16th pie mint plus the regular version. It's fine. I think it'll be fine. I'm now going to take and put my airlock back on both of these and we're going to let them age. It's 20 days old. There's no point in us trying to do some crazy things. I just want to see what happens with some age, what drops out, um, just how things melt. So I'll be back in a few weeks with an update. All right. It's been about three weeks. Let's taste test them real fast. Ooh, so this is just the Cab Sav wine, plus a little bit of the pie mint, but probably like 80% wine. So buttery and smooth and, mm, okay, pie mint. Oh, dang. Woo, with a little bit of um, oak, I think this, these are both gonna be incredible. This has got so much honey sweetness, floral value. This is just buttery, so good. We have right here, I'm gonna actually use this sugar maple light toast oak for both of them. They came with a different oak. I'm gonna go with this one. So this is a stave or spiral. I don't normally like these, honestly. I've had mixed results, but I think this will be good. So we're gonna put this one in here. This is worth, or can actually flavor up to three gallons. Oh, I said that wrong. So <laughs> this one stick, it can go for three gallons. So we're going to do a, a mixture in this case. So this whole sugar maple light toast is gonna go in this part right here. We're just gonna dump that in. That's gonna go ahead and start going. Then we're gonna mix some oak, which is gonna be interesting. We're gonna use the sugar maple. This is about 1.5 gallons worth. And we're gonna mix it with one whole ounce of just straight up American oak chips. So I'm gonna mix these in. Now there is like Chitto sand and some other things that I could add to this. I'm not going to do that yet. Those are mainly for, um, well, clarity and stuff. Not too concerned with it. These are both at the sweetness level I want. So I'm just going to push this down, let that one go. All right. The oak is going to add some tannic value, add some extra complexity to this. So we're going to let them go, come back in who knows how long and go from there. All right, here we are for the finale. This is the uh, just wine, regular Cab Sav wine. And then the pie mint over here. Uh, I bottled them at different times and I'll go ahead and explain the end process because the last clip I think you saw was um, after the primary, just kind of setting for a while. These have aged for two months since that last clip. They just sat around with the oak on them did some more tasting, I mean, tasted fantastic, and decided, all right, I'm uh, ready to be done with them. So I racked them over a couple times in that time to uh, help for clarity reasons, and then went ahead and bottled them. So I went ahead and bottled the Piment, as you'll see here. And then of course I went ahead and bottled the wine. And uh, I put them in actual wine bottles, and then some of them in smaller bottles. I didn't want to open a whole wine bottle just for me right now. so. That's why I'm opening these guys. They have uh, some nice labels on them. I'll show them as well. I, I love doing the labels for these things. So it's a lot of fun, but you don't care about that stuff. You care about the tasting. So let's go ahead and open them up and get a pour on them. All right, got a pour of each one. Over here on my right is the just regular old wine. And then on the left is the pie mint. Um, I do think for the fact that the wine is dry, um, I'm gonna start with it. So let's see what it tastes like. It's got a very, I mean, typical Cab Sav aroma and it's, uh, 
a little booziness on the nose, honestly. But it does smell really nice. The oak is also apparent. Yeah, these are pretty young, so I mean, did I update my, uh, I didn't put the, the <laughs> um, time I made this on that one. Yeah, okay, here we go. Ooh, that is smooth, buttery, really tannic, kind of pulls that moisture out of your mouth, which is nice. It's a, it's a nice thing. It's definitely dry, but it doesn't, ooh, this is good. It does not have the <coughs> um, total appearance of dry because it's got a little perceived active sweetness, so to speak. Oh man, that is good. Those that wine base was really nice in the first place. That is, I give it some time to age and mellow. That's gonna be fantastic. And I have a bunch of bottles of it left. Um, you'll see. I think I took a close up of of all the bottles I had. So um, I, I got quite a few. I had to do some mismatched bottles because I uh, I didn't have all of the same. So recycle your bottles so you don't have to spend money. Slip to the other side, so that was the wine. Here's the pie mint, which of course used blueberry honey. We didn't back sweeten. This one started off pretty hot. It was uh, 11.30 to start. We didn't cap, or we capped out the yeast, so we have some residual sweetness. Ooh, yeah, the oak is really apparent on this one too. It's um, definitely hit my nose. The notes that you get from the, the pie mint, the, or not the pie mint, the grape juice itself are here, but they're buried and kind of collaborating with some honey character. You get some nice floral notes from the honey. Ooh, definitely boozy though. Let's try it. Ooh, such a vastly different body. Yeah, it's like um, this pulls moisture and this feels like a really dumb thing to say, but this feels like it <laughs> adds moisture, uh, meaning it's not as the tannic doesn't pull as much tannic value out, so it doesn't really add, it's just not as detracting. Ooh, the oak though. The oak is really rounding out. That The sweetness what before was pretty hot, but because we added all that oak, it allowed it to, I don't know, sand. I, I like to use this analogy to sand the edges of this Sweetness. There's a lot of acidity from the tartaric acid there. There's sweetness from the honey, which we have left over, and then that oak is just rounding out, sanding the edges of the brew. This one also needs time to chill out. I think that ABV, the heat from the alcohol is a little hot, but with time, again, that will help. Both of these are really good. This is, I mean, I, I drink wine, of course, um, but I love mead, so I'm gonna gravitate more towards the pie mint here. The wine itself is good. If you want to just make a wine base, Cab Sav wine. The pie mint is incredible. I think the collaboration between the honey, the oak, the um, grapes, the varietal grapes I used, and, and all of that worked really well. And this is something I am absolutely going to send off to some competitions. I'm already planning on sending it for competitions in the future. It does need age, so I have bottles set back so that when I'm ready to send them off, I can just take them and do it. But I'm super excited for both of these to age. My last wine I made, I still have bottles of, and it's about two or three years old now. So I'm definitely planning on keeping bottles of these for the future. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, this whole process is pretty easy. Those wine kits are really nice, especially if you don't have great access to nice grapes or grape juice. Um, here in Oklahoma, we're not really known for our wine production, so it's not easy to get nice quality grapes. So therefore, it's easier to go to the brew shop, get on your homebrew store, whatever, purchase a wine kit if you can. Um, on that note, I am affiliated with Homebrew Ohio, so you can go check out the link down below. And anything you buy through that link will support the channel, which is um, helpful to me. I hope you've enjoyed this. Please hit subscribe and, and like this video and, and do all those, those things. You can help the channel grow by being active and commenting and doing those things. Um, I appreciate you guys taking your time to watch this video. I hope I might have inspired you. If you have questions or comments, leave them below. And I will see you next time. 
in a future video. Cheers.